Okay, Punarvasu Nakshatra Part Three. So this is, you know, as we as we talked about in the previous videos, ruled by Goddess Aditi. It's a Datu star, which is very important. It's a mineral star, so it's about structure and creating and building out the creation and expanding. And you know, those stars, uh, Datu, Rajas, Karma, Brahma stars, yeah, they're very uh, constructive. They rely on being supported or supporting others. You know, it's the star of the goddess who is the mother of all the other gods. So this all makes sense <clears throat> as we covered. The next quality that I need to cover is the moving and unsteady quality. Now this is the first of the moving and unsteady nakshatras that we have come across. And all the moving and unsteady nakshatras are great for days when you want to move or do something different or be spontaneous or shift or, but they're not good for things that you want to be lasting and be fixed and firm with, right? That would be the fixed and firm nakshatras. Um, reading from the manual here, uh, this is the first, uh, wait, I already said that. So for this one, the moving and unsteady quality is about moving things back to a new and shining Vasu type state, right? Um, and this takes a type of activity, so it takes Rajas, you know? And this does make one have a little bit more of a restless kind of quality with this nakshatra. It needs something to kind of take care of to work on, to restore. And this is a great nakshatra for just getting you up and moving, cleaning the house, getting, you know, just getting your, running your errands and things like that. Um, the Sanskrit word given for this moving and unsteady is chala, and it means moving, trembling, shaking, uh, loose, unsteady, fluctuating. Um, it can also even mean like playful, sporting, distracting. So that's what these nakshatras relate to. And the goddess does relate to like playfulness. Like one of the names of the goddess is Lalita, um, which means, you know, she who plays. <clears throat> um, the moving and unsteady, the other stars that have this quality are Swati, uh, Shravana, <clears throat> Shravishta, or better known as Danishta in modern times, and Shatabishak. So these are all other moving and steady nakshatras, and all these stars are always great for travel. And I've found that when I just had to travel, like fly and do different things, that I found that a little bit of hair in my yeah sticking out there. But I found that um, yeah, I usually ended up traveling on these nakshatras without planning it. Um, so yeah, this is a big nakshatra for travel, and what's funny is it happens to fall in. Like I said, it falls in Cancer Rashi. Again, not sidereal, tropical. We use uh, the tropical Vedic astrology movement uses tropical signs and sidereal nakshatras. And there's a whole, like, you know, there's years worth of study to understand why we do that. So if you don't understand that, don't just quickly write me off for saying that if you haven't, you know, studied for 15 years like me. And <clears throat> there's definitely an intelligent reason why there's a vast movement a revolution, a renaissance, if you will, of astrologers, Vedic astrologers experimenting with tropical signs, but keeping the nakshatra sidereal, of course. Furthermore, um, we've, t yeah, so without getting distracted on that topic, but yeah, this star falls in Cancer Rashi, and that is the sign of foreign lands, of dwelling in foreign lands. So that's actually a much more accurate technique than this, than this, uh, well, honestly, the Rashi techniques really are more accurate. Um, that's why Parashara spends his entire, you know, all of this right here, this entire thousand or more pages worth of Parashara's book, not, none of it's about nakshatras. It's all about Rashi. So again, get your Rashi fundamentals down, take the Jyotish course that I'm taking and make sure you're getting that down as well because this Nakshatra stuff is a little bit more collegiate level astrology. Um, with that having been said, Cancer is the sign of foreign travel and travel, traveling in foreign lands, dwelling abroad. And so if you have a planet in Punarvasu, you already have a planet in Cancer, so it can also speak to traveling abroad. But I just wanted to point out that that's actually more likely because of the Cancer quality than it is because of Punarvasu. But again, you want to look for confluence in astrology. So when things overlap and double up, that's great. We can be more confident to predict there. So when you have planets in Punarvasu, it's actually very likely that well, if it is a planet that is your self-factor, your Atmakarika, or if it relates to the fourth house, 
um, fourth house lord, then yeah, you're very likely to travel internationally and to live abroad at some point in your life. And remember, this is the nakshatra of a house and about moving and returning and finding a new home like we've already covered. But then we also talked about how the sutra, it's wind from above. So that fits the moving and unsteady quality. Wind just blows when it blows, and then it's not again, you know? So this is not a consist this is not a nakshatra being consistent. This is more of a nakshatra of, you know, again, like being like the wind. And so, yeah, planets in this asterism have this moving, fluctuating quality. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, so it's active in renewing and creating and expanding. So it makes sense that it would be moving and unsteady. And as I write here in the manual, Punarvasu is like when you need to get out and take a walk to just refresh yourself. Um, when, the, when the moon is in these moving and unsteady nakshatras, it can be very good to just take walks, to just do a little bit more movement, all right, and not be stagnant. Um, and that's kind of how Punarvasu works. And because of that, it beca it's very immensely active at like restoring and regenerating and rejuvenating and recreating and repeating patterns and things because of this active moving quality, both the rajasic quality and the moving quality. Um, and you know, that's the thing is that wind is a refreshing source. Re, again, refreshment would be Punarvasu, you know? So wind is a refreshing <clears throat> thing, you know? And that's, again, that's why it's symbol, that's why it, that's why ne this nakshatra rules wind. Although at the same time, like Svati and Vayu is really the nakshatra of wind and the wind god and the prana and all, but still, this is very important too. And, you know, you can have more than one thing relate to wind because that's such a big part of life. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so it's a star of wind. It's an active force that moves things, brings new things to us. The wind moves the sailboats and the ships like in the old days. And so the wind was associated with new ideas. And still, I mean, it brings new things. Um, yeah, so... <clears throat> Yeah, this nakshatra, you can really contemplate the wind and get a lot out of it. You know, it's vast, it's expansive, the wind is ever moving, it's unpredictable. You know, this is a great nakshatra for being spontaneous. Like I talked about my Kriya Yoga teacher, Roy Eugene Davis, as well as other people I've noticed who have an exalted Jupiter here in Punarvasu, they can have just such a fresh, spontaneous quality. And you know, that's kind of the quality of the guru. Enlightened gurus are usually very just unpredictable and fresh, you know. As I say in the manual here, Punarvasu has that Shakti to help one gain something valuable. Normally it's just said to gain wealth or substance, but again, that's a little too broad because it's really to gain anything Vasu, anything shining, desirable, valuable, anything uh, beautiful. Yeah, so be a little bit more open with that kind of interpretation, but it's definitely a great nakshatra for returning wealth. As we'll see, like when I was talking about the example of my prajna where I lost my wallet and the significator showed that it would be found and that it was in Punarvasu and it would be returned to me, right? Um, but <clears throat> yeah, to gain substance, to gain wealth, or to rejuvenate one to a fresh state, to regain your previous luster. You know how people had like a luster or a shine or a mojo or an aura? You know, that's kind of what Vasu actually relates to a little bit. <clears throat> um, and again, this, you know, this star is all about freshness or ardrum, you know, moisture, freshness, aliveness, like dew, you know, um, the greenness of a plant that is just bursting forth is the best way to think of ardrum. And so, yeah, the above sutra is not just saying Punarvasu is wind from above and moisture from below, but it's saying it's newness from below. You know, um, I know I already touched on that, but I need to repeat that. Um, it's the wind element that moves things, that literally blows new things our way. And that's the same idea as gaining wealth or substance, you see? Um, so that's what Punarvasu is all about, is just to return the wealth, to return you to a new fresh state. Um, and one way we normally experience this in the modern day is by getting a paycheck, right? Um, <clears throat> payday comes twice a month for the average worker, and it gives a sense of returned abundance, returned wealth, returned substance, and it makes us feel good, makes us kind of feel that energy of the goddess, making us let us know everything is okay, right? Um, so that's one way you can think of that. But again, uh, 
you'd, you'd be very unwise to, to read and try to do stuff with paychecks without focusing on the Rashis and Nababas and stuff like the 11th house is the key house for getting your paycheck, for those who don't know. Um, and of course, if you're interested in finance stuff, you got to take my financial astrology course, of course, you know, go into all that really in depth. But OK, so that's um, this is a good nakshatra for financial astrology. Actually, I didn't mean to bring that up. This is a good nakshatra for people for like um, if you're an astrologer and you're in wanting to get, figure out what field to specialize in, having planets in Punarvasu could be very good for that and also possibly pretty good for relocation astrology and for working with women. Um, you know, and just counseling women, probably. <clears throat> but that's more speculative. I'm just guessing, really, there. Um, now, the planetary lord is Jupiter. And again, we don't want to overemphasize the planetary lord, because that's kind of the problem with a lot of our nakshatra understanding so far in the, in the modern kind of pop culture world. And, uh, you know, that's just the, those are just the planetary lords that are given for the Vimshatari Dasha, but we have other Dashas with different planets. But yeah, it is still helpful to know that Jupiter is the planetary lord because Jupiter is, again, a planet of expansion, you know? He's a planet of wealth, of return, of abundance, of returning these things. And so I think that's also kind of why Jupiter exalted in Cancer and in this nakshatra does so well because he's in his own, you know, he rules this nakshatra in the Vimshatari Dasha scheme. So there's really a lot of blessings that I, I really can't emphasize enough. Having Jupiter in Punarvasu, it can really help one overcome other blemishes in the chart if they're willing to do it um or whenever that timing sets itself up when jupiter or dasha comes or something aspects they can find a good guidance or a good man or a good thing that can help them <clears throat> mars saturn rahu or mercury don't do that well in this nakshatra in general and that's because they're starved by their enemy the moon Mars is actually does okay here, but still because he's debilitating cancer, he can show some of the lower sides of this next shotcher in this age. Um, now, what's un what's interesting is it's a uh, it's a side facing next shotcher. Um, oh, actually, one more thing about Mars. When we're gonna go into this in the examples more, but just to remind, or if I didn't, I think I already mentioned this, but. Uh, Mars debilitating cancer or really any afflictions to this Punarvasu um, asterism, it can make one end up repeating a lot of stuff over and over that was never good to do in the first place. And then they just keep, keep repeating it or um, hoping that things will return or hoping that things will get better than then they don't and they never do. <clears throat> and they're not, you know, if Mars is here, it's debilitated. So it's kind of like... <clears throat> It just depends on the rest of the chart. I can't say this is true for everyone who has that because Mars in Cancer is also delighted by its friend. So it's a little bit more tricky, but uh, in general, it's still debilitated here. So it can be tough for one to have a strong like warrior consciousness or like assert themselves or deal well with confrontation, you know, <clears throat> um, and will kind of repeat those patterns more than they would need to, you could say. Um, but again, uh, got to read the whole chart altogether. So if you have Mars and Cancer, don't freak out. Uh, I'm saying that. It's just like how we saw Mrigashira or Invica was side facing. This is also a side facing nakshatra. And, you know, Invica dealt with spreading out and diffusing. And Punarvasu deals with, again, kind of the same idea of just spreading out and expanding outwards. Um, and yeah, like it's kind of again, like when you're traveling or, you know, it's like looking at a vast landscape is it would be a, more of a very Punarvasu thing. And it's remember, it's the expanding nature of the universe and how nature is just always growing, you know, um, as long as there is what? Wind, prana, oxygen and moisture. You know what I mean? And those are the key things for growth in the planet. And you know, summer just goes wild as long as there's not a drought, as long as there's the ardrum and the moisture. And that's the goddess who keeps that life. Water is related to the goddess, but water is life. You know what I mean? And so it's the goddess's job to keep that going, right? And to keep nature just sprawling out. Um, and uh, yeah, so side-facing stars are the best for spreading out, sprawling out. And one symbol of Punarvasu is the arrow, remember? And that symbolizes how Punarvasu really has this energy to expand and move outward. And arrows are normally shot sideways, not up or down. 
Um, we also notice, though, again, because I like the house symbol a lot more, the house is also something that just spreads out sideways. You don't really, you know, houses don't go up or down as much as they just spread out sideways or they're side facing. Houses are side facing. Um, so that's kind of neat. Fingers, it, it rules the fingers in terms of body parts. And that's what we reach out and expand with again, you know? So <clears throat> there's so much the fingers allow us to do. They open up so many possibilities. You know, it's the opposable thumb and everything that makes separates us from the apes. But they're also a more fragile, sensitive part of the body. Um, and they're a rather moving and unsteady part of the body. So they are essential and desirable parts of the body that we use to reach out and to return things, to grab things that are useful to us and to return them back to us. So again, we can see how fingers relates to Punarvasu. Yeah, and uh, Brihat Samhita relates it to, I have it here in the manual, the truthful, the pure and generous, clean, rich, highborn, handsome, intelligent, grain merchants, famous people, merchants, servants, artisans, bankers, cave dwellers, weapons, and best of grains. Yeah, so it's, it's really interesting how... <clears throat> I don't see it ever connecting to weapons, to be honest. I wonder if that's, I don't know what's up with that. Um, but it, again, it's like very not warlike nakshatra at all. But that might be someone added that because of the arrow symbolism. But the, the truthful makes a lot of sense. Um, the pure and generous, the clean, you know, just bringing things back to a fresh, you know, clean, freshness, ardrum. You see there's an association there. Um, and yeah, it's especially true that it relates to like highborn people or Brahminical type people or truthful people, intelligent people, especially because it falls in Cancer, a Brahmin Rashi in this Yuga. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's really interesting, the mythology. And um, there's a lot more that we could go into that I want to get to, you know, kind of like when we have more time um, about the mythology of Aditi and Brahma and her connection to... Uh, like, well, Aditya and Brahma, she, favored, she created the 12 Adityas, but in Greek mythology, it's really fascinating because Kronos and Rhea had this union which created the 12 Olympians and the 12 powers of Greek mythology. So it's really, really interesting. Um, yeah, and in terms of, we'll get into that more in the mundane stuff, which or it might actually have to be a whole other course, to be honest. I learned, I've... Studying these nakshatras, you get really into like deep ancient history and mythology and stuff that's really cool because I've already been into that and it, it just overlaps a lot of what you've learned about other things in that field. But yeah, in terms of remedials, uh, travel, uh, in terms of remedial measures, if you want to strengthen, like say Mars debilitated in Punarvasu or you've got Saturn here or Rahu or Mercury, um, you want to maybe do Aditi mantras, goddess mantras. You might want to travel more, um, do some form of uh, worshiping of goddesses or murti, or um, you can do recycling more, reusing items, repurposing things. People that have strong plants in Punarvasu love recycling, and they love nature, and they love supporting nature and returning nature to that fresh state, so you can do things that work towards that. Um repurposing you know just repurposing things uh getting fresh air in general and like walking and hiking like i was saying and meditation as well pranayama practice definitely all right cool so <clears throat> that's really all the co all the qualities that i wanted to cover for it you can see all this in the manual and now we will go in and do some examples of punarvasu thanks <laughs>